here's the kicker. Whenever you, you, you feel like your horse is just not going and you're having to use your legs or your spur a little harder than you would want to, you need to kind of, you need to kind of have this conversation after the fact with your horse that says, that says, hey, I'm not gonna kick you every time, but you need to pay attention to my movement and my leg, otherwise I'll have to, okay? This is how I do that. All right, for the next two things are the spin. I have a way of sort of hinting to my horse that I'm going to shut down, and he feels that, and sometimes they shut down a little bit sooner than I want. And for a horse to really, really plus in a show pen, they have to look like they're going to, they could spin at the sp speed that they're spinning all day and never stop, okay? So this is why that sometimes, uh, not sometimes, most of the time, so self-locomotion in the turn, a horse, meaning that a horse that's spinning on his own where you're not dragging him with your rein or having used to use so much leg to keep going is going to score more than a horse that you are having to do these things because then you're showing sort of your limit. You're showing the judge, and my gas pedal is at the... Uh, at the at the end and so this is all I've got as opposed to a horse that is uh, that looks like it's doing it more on his own is going to look more willing and it looks faster to the eye it's more appealing and you have more chance of getting a plus in the score and also um, you're going to have a better chance of shutting down with more style and in the right place so this was my uh, uh, my priority I can make any horse turn pretty fast everybody can make a horse turn pretty fast if you just kind of pull and kick and but for them to do it uh, with a very, very uh, clean and solid and confident footstep, and for them to stop really on a dime, uh, for them, for me, more as important as speed is commitment. So I want to feel like my horse is committed to the turn. Okay. So one of the exercises that I did walking around, I did that in the show pen over there or in the practice pen. But one of the exercises that I did a lot is I would walk on the loose rein, similar as I was doing for the counter canner. And the same thing is I would take his shoulder, go get the corner, the control of his shoulder and the, cor the corner of his mouth here. And I would push, push him out with my left leg that way so that everything just, just gets off my leg cleanly. And, and, um, and then as it went, I started to be a little more picky about how quickly he moved away from my leg, meaning I was working on my gas pedal in the spin. Meaning if I came with my leg and I clocked, then I wanted him to really move. But his reaction often, just like in the lead change, is to go whenever he feels he didn't move or he feels he needs to move and it was a little too sudden. So this was always a challenge with him. So this is why that here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on, on on first making sure that he gives and goes forward and as soon as he does then I'm going to apply this leg here and I like to use this leg because it helps channel that energy and, and helps him follow his nose and then whenever I do open this leg to allow, my, to allow him to go into the spin it feels like there's some relief and it feels like I've been putting a restriction to the spin the whole time doing this exercise while working my gas pedal and then when I open it it feels like oh finally I can get in okay so this is why I like this exercise so again we've got to make sure that we can take full, con full contact here and that we can walk a straight line as soon as we can do that the next thing I'm going to do while well, I'm supporting all of the doors here one two three four okay I'm supporting and I'm keeping that forward motion with that right leg here. Now I'm just going to apply some spur and I'm going to cluck or kiss as if I was asking for speed in the turn. And I didn't get a reaction. So what I did is I just kind of rolled my spur there. Sometimes I like to open and tap. Sometimes I like to roll the spur. It depends. I'm, I mean, use your, your, uh, use your feel and judgment there. I'm going to bring him back here. I'm going to try again. This time I got a reaction, not the best one, so I didn't kick him, okay? Uh, I don't want him to be afraid or think I'm always going to kick him. So I gave him the chance to do it better the second time. So I kissed again and applied a second amount of pressure, and then he reacted good. So then I could say, good job. Now he's a little apprehensive, so what am I doing is I'm not doing anything. I'm just getting make sure that I can go back to my basic, which is full flexion, walking straight. Full flexion, walking straight. There we go. Now that felt good, now I'm going to try. There you go. This time in order for him to react, I pushed a little harder with my leg, but I came and tapped with this leg a little bit more forward, closer to the girt, and that helped him remind that, hey, it's not going that way, we're going forward, okay? Exercise, very good. Reaction to cue. That was pretty good. Little bracy at the beginning, but then right away I could feel him be like, uh oh, and then move his butt. So, sorry about the sniffles. I need to stop making that sound. All right, 
Now, how do I apply that in the turn? So what I did is after he did that well, sometimes I would alternate, go left and right, because I like to do transitions from right to left, right? You guys know that. But now for the benefit of, uh, of this exercise, I'm going to go left. So then what I did after is, now I'm opening the door to go in a spin, and then I would take, this, take his chin the exact same way, and then I ask him to go, and as soon as he went, I would release. Now he needs to keep turning. Okay, this is the committed part that I'm looking after. I'm gonna take his chin again. Oh, okay. So when I release him, he kind of gets long, kept going, he kept spinning, I like that. But he didn't really stay like looking in like with the strength and, and power and energy focused into his front feet the way that he does when I do ask him. So again, not perfect, but doing this drill, and I'll show you here in a second how I did it exactly over there without talking, but doing this drill just like this, There you go. This time I didn't have to take him, but he just went. So what, he, what happens here is that when my hand comes and my body comes, everything just kind of follows me perfectly. And the way that I get to that is by getting rid of every, any resistance whatsoever to this here. See how soft that is? So that's because he's very, very confident with my inside leg. He's very confident about where to go. Plus, I managed to, there you go, to make him reactive to my cue, okay? So all three of these elements coming together is helping me make the turn a lot better. So all of it, whenever I asked, oh, there. So at the beginning of this one, I gave him a couple of taps after I kissed. He didn't quite go. So the way that I use my leg is very similar to the way that I use it in my exercise here, okay? So here's a kicker. Whenever you, you, you feel like your horse is just not going, then you're having to use your legs or your spur a little harder than you would want to. You need to kind of, you need to kind of have this conversation after the fact with your horse that says, that says, hey, I'm not gonna kick you every time but you need to pay attention to my movement and my leg, otherwise I'll have to, okay? This is how I do that. I come here, and I'm like, hey, see how I'm opening my legs really wide? See how he went off, and then I could release him, he reacted, I never touched him with anything, all I did is open my leg. But what I told him is like, hey, see here, pay attention to my leg. This time, when I opened, he didn't react, okay? So then I gave him a tap, that means, hey, pay attention to my leg, I'm not gonna kick you unless you move, so if you move, there you go, like that is good, okay? But if you don't, I'll have to. So basically, it's a way to get him to react without having to kick him. This way, in the spin. See there? Oh, good. See how he freed up there? Braced at the beginning, because I opened my leg wide. I exaggerated it so that you can see it. But then he was like, oh, whoa. Again, that's what's been mostly the problem with him, but this is how I'm fixing it, because I'm getting him to go without having to kick him. Try again. Oh, this time, I, f I gave him a few warnings, then he relaxed, and he was like, okay, I know you're not gonna kick me unless I, you need to. So then he, he committed to the spin pretty good, and then I asked him for speed, he didn't quite react, so then I gave him a slap. So it's not like never hit, but it's just being fair about it, and get to where your horse is not depending on your leg all the time. And this is the tricky part from going from, going from softening up and making your horse you know, trust your legs and where you, to where you can wrap them around them and, and your horse is just 100% relaxed, going from that state to 100% intensity to get a, you know, a plus in the maneuver. Going from one to the other, this requires precision and fairness. And this is how I try to program my horse. Oh, 
This time I turned him with a light contact to the inside without pulling him. He was a bit stiffer. I would have liked for him to come a little bit. More. But again, this is me making a compromise. And uh, and this is why, and this is what I did a lot over there, and I feel that I got the best that I could out of his turn. But out of the three runs, among five judges each run, that would have been 15 opportunities to score a plus half. I think I did probably five out of 15. So having accomplished what I did without plusing my turns gives me a lot of, you know, a, a, a lot of hope to what I know I can do with this horse next year once I get to that. Um, but I attribute a lot of, of, uh, of, of, you know, how his turn actually um, though improved tremendously in the last stretch. And I think that that was, you know, from, from being able to do that. So quickly here without talking, I'm going to work on his turn around so that you get a visual of a little bit of what I did there and how um, I will use um, this exercise here to be able to grab a good hold of his shoulder and his chin in the turn to really control and really control his feet and make him step at the speed and pace and and uh, uh, and 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 a way that I want him to and then after that releasing him and letting him figure it out on his own and then combining that with uh, with making him reactive to my to my voice and to my leg and this is what I'm going to work on a lot through the next two months to make that even more effective next year when I go to the horse shop. Oh. So this is where I'm going to leave it. This is just a little example of what it is that I, that I did over there, what I'm going to be working on over the next two months. Again, there's a lot more to it than that. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. But start putting it into practice, see how it does. If you got any questions or 
you know, if, if, if you want me to look at what you're doing, comment on it, criticize it, send me a video, I'm always open to that. And uh, other than that, I'm two days from now flying over to Germany for the next couple of weeks, looking very much forward to that. Um, so my friends over there, looking forward to see you guys. Reach out to me, I'll be there for the next couple of weeks. And uh, I'll be working on a lot of the stuff that we recorded prior to Futuri, I haven't had time to edit and upload. So stuff will still be coming from now to the end of the year, but that's the last actual kind of live video that you will be seeing from me before the holidays. So with that said, um, if you're not subscribed to this video, please, uh, to this uh, YouTube channel, please do so uh, as it helps us reach more people. Um, if you like, uh, if you find any value in this video, please give it a like and oh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to miss doing this until New Year, but I guess everyone needs a break. So it's been a good one. I hope you had a great year. See you in the next time.